On December 4th, the finalists of the VIU Business Plan Competition will do a showdown at the Dragon's Den Competition here at VIU. It'll be an awesome event. It's the second annual business plan competition hosted here at VIU, and it's open to both current students at VIU and alumni. The idea is it's for, uh, for new startups. So we don't want established businesses. We'd like someone who has been generating revenue for less than a year. So true startups, someone who may have just an idea they want to bring it forward, or someone who's just getting going. This competition's open to all departments, all students, whether you're in the trades, music, it doesn't matter where you are because entrepreneurs are everywhere on campus. Well, this is the second year that we're uh, running the uh, business plan competition. Vancouver Island University is pretty excited about it. We've got um, a number of community partners, uh, the Peter DeRuver Foundation, Nanaimo Economic Development, Coastal Community Credit Union, Young Professionals of Nanaimo, and we're working very closely with Startup Nanaimo as well. Last year we just primarily did cash prizes, but this year we've developed a suite of resources that's basically like a Kickstarter for the entrance. So we have everything from marketing, lawyers, uh, graphic design, and a whole suite of resources. So it's like a Kickstarter for everything that they need to get going with their business. They'll be eligible to compete for $17,000 in cash and prizes. The deadline to get the uh, business plan in uh, to me is November 16th. Uh, after that, the, uh, the judging panel will have a look at it and determine the finalists. Um, and the finalists will, with the support of some mentors, prepare a pitch and go before the Dragon's Den style panel on December 4th. We'll have an awards night and uh, quite a ceremony here on campus. Last year we uncovered such a huge entrepreneurial spirit up at VIU. I'm so excited to hear the ideas from this year's applicants, both the alumni and the current students. So we'll see who uh, wins this year's Dragon's Den. Hi, this is James McElroy for the Two-Headed Giant Comics and Classic Gaming. We're here to talk to you about Back to the Future Day, which is October 21st, 2015. Back in 1989, Doc Brown and Marty McFly traveled back to the future to 2015 on October 21st to check out what it had to offer. Now we don't have hoverboards or hover cars, but we do have some other wonderful technology, such as iPhones, computers, and a brand new Back to the Future comic from IDW releasing on October 21st. Be sure to check it out, and next time you're watching Back to the Future, see if you can point out all the things they got right and all the things they got wrong. Go interactive with Annette. I'm at the Nanaimo Museum and I'm speaking with Amy Greenaway who is the interpreter curator and she's going to tell us about a very mysterious man who once lived here in Nanaimo and there's a bit of a display going on. Who's Brother 12? He was one of Nanaimo's more infamous residents. In the 1920s he had a cult in Cedar by the Sea. He would probably have said that it was a spiritual colony spiritual colony. Now, Brother 12, if you haven't heard the stories, there's been movies about him, there's been plays about him. Apparently he was a very charismatic man, so what was the secret behind him? I think that you're right that he was very charismatic because it's the only thing that explains the number of followers that he had. He had really prominent, wealthy followers. They came from all over North America, from parts of Europe, and I think to be able to convince people um, to follow him and to s sell everything they own and move to a colony, he must have been very charismatic yeah. and persuasive. And, and I, I understand also, um, if it is the, what I've read about him, that he, he took all of their money? That was apparently one of the pieces, is that before you moved to the colony, you sold off all of your possessions and then you lived in the colony after you turned in your money to Brother 12. And then did he disappear? Yes, he was set to go to trial in the early 1930s and before his trial date, he disappeared. Uh, he, there's a death certificate for him in Switzerland the following year but nobody really knows. Now, I think there's a, a bit of a legacy about him also that people have gone on a kind of a treasure hunt, haven't they? Yes. Uh, the colony at Cedar-by-the-Sea is now a, quite a few different private properties, and there's lots of different stories there about people looking for the treasure. He also had other colonies on nearby De Courcy and Valdez Island, so people have looked in those areas as well for the treasure. But as far as I've heard, uh, no one has found any hidden caches of money after he left. It's just one of the kind of the stranger bits of our history, isn't it? It really is. And people are very interested in the story of Brother 12. We have lots of requests from the public to hear more about him. So we thought this would be a nice way to show off our collection and to answer some questions. 
All right, thank you very much, Amy. Come down to the Nanaimo Museum and check out the Brother 12 exhibit. The Nanaimo Museum is hosting Brother 12 tours. There's one on October the 21st, and if you missed that one, there's another one taking place on October the 28th. This time of year, the museum also hosts lantern tours that might be a little bit haunting. Pre-registration is required for both of these tours, and you can do that by calling the museum, 250-753-1821. And for details on the tours themselves, you can go online, nanaimomuseum.ca. We're going to spend some time now with Derek Johnstone. He's actually down in Victoria, hanging out in his glory with a man who illustrates for both Ghostbusters and Back to the Future comic books.